I'm a pleasure. I've, I'm a tropical ecologist um, specializing in the ecology of rainforests, but particularly in the ecology of slash and burn agriculture. And for many years I've been researching the fundamental question, why uh, an ecosystem that's so productive, the most productive on the planet, when cut down and burned, will produce a crop for maybe one year, possibly two, and then so rapidly fails. It's a huge uh, paradox. And the answers when I began this work in the, in the mid-1980s were really inconclusive. Uh, very few studies have been done. And in some cases, they were positively contradictory. Mm -hmm. And I was able to devote time to uh, a pilot study, threw up uh, some very interesting questions. I did some work in Costa Rica in a laboratory in Cambridge and focused absolutely on one, uh, one topic. The availability of phosphorus, it seems to be the key to a sustainable agricultural system, food production system, on rainforest soils that have been slashed and burned. Well, we spent many years working on that and possible alternatives. And the, the system that came out of seven years of the Cambridge uh, Inga projects was if you add very small quantities of rock phosphate to a system, plus the system itself feeds very large quantities of organic material back into the soil, which is exactly what the rainforest does, then you have a sustainable system. Uh, we developed a, a system called alley cropping, in which you use uh, fast-growing, nitrogen-fixing trees planted in what looked like hedgerows, a few meters apart, the idea is you let them grow, you prune them to let the light in and to put green material onto the surface of the soil to provide physical protection for it and ultimately to feed through decomposition nutrients back into the soil. Uh, we developed a system called Inga alley cropping and then it came to testing a system with farmers, with real people to see whether something developed by an academic could possibly be accepted by real people in a real situation. And we did that in Honduras. And the answers to both were yes. They, they would accept the system. They saw the benefits. In particular, the system also produces firewood in great quantities. And that's the most valuable. It's it, it, more so than I imagined when I started the work. The firewood for the kitchen stoves is a, a valued byproduct in addition to the, uh, the food security that, uh, that the system provides. The program now we're calling Land for Life. Uh, the aim is to, it's a 10-year program, the aim is to uh, recruit 40 families a year uh, to the system, help them in introduc uh, introduction, uh, giving them seed material, bags for the nurseries and all of that to establish the system, a process that takes perhaps three years, it's long business, and technical assistance and moral support while they're doing that. And what we don't have is infrastructure. We need a teaching center, and we need a center where we can receive very large quantities of cash crops that are going to start coming in from remote communities in the mountainside, uh, it's perhaps three or four years from now.